Hello, welcome and thank you for joining. In several videos, we're going to be discussing the importance of values and how they can better affect the relationships that we partake in daily. In today's conversation, we'll be chatting to Nigel Cohen, Neil Hawkes, Andrew Fuller and Terry Lovett. I'm Kira Dempsey Branch, presenting. Specifically in today's video, we're going to be discussing the relevance of values. So, what do values mean? How do they affect us? Our experts will be giving their thoughts and opinions onto the relevance of values giving us some insight and some experiences from their sectors. So, for example, education or psychology. I got my real insight into values talking to very small children. And I was searching for what would small children really understand by the term value. So I was talking with six and seven year olds and we were doing all sorts of experimentation and really creative looking at what this word values means. And a little child looked up at me and he said, um, I think a value is something that guides us in some way, something that guides our, our thinking. And, and then he said, and then once we've got our thinking right, it then helps us in our behavior too. So I think a value is a principle that guides our thinking first and then helps us in our daily lives, in our behavior. So it can be put as simply as that. The question is, you know, as I look around the world at politicians, at business leaders, I always think, well, what is it that drives, what motivates these people? And really, at depth, it is their values that drives them. Because innately, we have qualities. We have qualities of respect, love, um, compassion. And these basic human innate qualities are the ones that, w the values that we need to nurture in our world, particularly at this time. Brilliant, thank you, Neil. And to Andrew, why do values matter? For me, values are inner truths that sort of resonate throughout our lives. They build our relationships and they help us build our position from which we view the circumstances that we encounter in our lives. A quick question for you, uh, Andrew. Have you ever experienced values in practice in your work? And if so, how? Could you explain it, give an example? Well, yes, part of my counselling work is with people of all ages, but one of the areas is particularly with teenagers who hold their values very close to their chest and their hearts, I think. And so adolescence is particularly a time when people believe things absolutely and they often deride the hypocrisy of or the perceived hypocrisy of the adult world and so finding their core values and using those as ways to engage them in positive ways where they change things powerfully makes a gigantic difference in their lives so one of the things that we do is we create students create the future projects where young people take on an issue or of that of their choosing where they want to make a big difference in the world and they just do it for a short period of time and list them in that. and it, the results have been remarkable because of course quite often things are done to young people rather than by young people and when of course young people start to behave in ways that are compassionate or generous or caring they start to define themselves that way and so they start to realize that those values are within them already and so it's like a an unveiling if you like of the inner the inner parts of themselves Which, is it fair to say that from the unveiling of their values from a young age being aware to the concept of values is almost a predetermination of how they'll act in the future in some sort of way I think your values unfold as you develop an age. And so clearly, often as young children, we're very focused on our survival and we're probably fairly me oriented. And then gradually we get to a point where we start to appreciate the position of other people and how we can relate to them. And so it's a process of learning what those values are that basically can guide our lives. And probably it's really only in our middle uh, primary school years, which would be sort of eight, nine, ten years of age, and we start to get a really powerful view of, 
of creating a difference. And then, of course, during adolescence, there's a moment, I think, in anyone's life when you have to kind of finally realize that you are the leader that you've been waiting for. And that moment is an incredibly important one because if you keep waiting for somebody else to lead you, you're going to be waiting a long, long time. Whereas if you then start to think, well, how can I be influential and how can I empower other people to create a difference in the world, that's when you really start to develop as a human being. Brilliant. And the same question to you too, Neil. How do you see engaging with values working in practice? I'd like to refer, uh, I know not all listeners will be uh, um, focused on schoolwork, but I'd like to refer to a, a visit I made last Friday to a school in Lincoln in, in the UK, in which the school had deliberately made values a focus for everything that they do in the school. It was a values-based school. So the school has really thought through uh, what values they want uh, as a community. And what I then saw was that the children were able to articulate what those values actually mean. They had an understanding because they had been introduced to the vocabulary. My big thing is that uh, society at large does not have the vocabulary of values. It doesn't understand words such as respect, tolerance. Um, so we need to induct, all of us need to induct ourselves into an understanding of values. So when children engage with this, this concept of values, this awareness of values, what difference does it make to their behaviour, not just in their education, but in society, in their everyday life? I think what I've noticed, what I've observed in children, and is that they, they start to engage in what I've termed the wisdom cycle, so that there's an input of information, they will hear something, uh, someone will ask them a question, uh, perhaps uh, someone will insult them or say something that could disturb them. But people who have an understanding of values seem to build in a pause mechanism. So they hear what's going on, but then they go internal and there's that pause while they think about the most appropriate response that they can give. And so what I am observing in people who are inducted into the language of values is that it gives them this, this pause facility because they are using their internal world. They are doing something that I call being self-led, being really led by your prefrontal cortex and that, that ability to integrate your brain so that you can give an appropriate response that isn't uh, as Andrew would talk about, because I've heard him talk about it, dependent on the limbic system suddenly kicking off with emotions. So that's a little insight there. We'd love to hear more from Andrew on this topic. Um, so to Andrew, how, how do you see engaging with values? One of the ones recently that uh, we've been working on here is with one of our colleagues, Peter Wiltshire. And it's an example of, let's say you bought a chair off a friend of yours for, uh, let's say, 20 pounds, but you're able to sell it on eBay for 950 pounds. What's, what's the right thing to do? And to give those sorts of examples and then to debate it through means that later on, when, when something similar occurs, there, you've taken that response out of the automatic part of our brain, the cerebellum, and you've taken it into the prefrontal cortex where we can actually start to think about these and evaluate what's the best thing to do. You know, obviously weighing up the pros and the cons of various positions then helps you to kind of mature in terms of your thinking around that. And I find generally many people have never had the opportunity to do that. And coming over to you, Terry, again, you've had extensive work with value-based value, value based uh, education leading initiatives in Australia. When you put this into practice, did you see a positive, a positive um, advantage of using values in society? Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> we we dealt a lot in the early days with what I 
came to coin as the surprise effect. People were surprised that uh, just going about schooling with a values focus could make such a difference. In, in the early days, you know, some fairly simple stuff of just, um, you know, making sure that an assembly was done in a, in a particular kind of way with a particular kind of ambience, um, concentrating on the positive, the encouraging, the affirming, um, dealing with, you know, some prickly issues as gently as possible rather than in a punitive kind of a way, and then taking that into the classroom uh, and then, you know, in many cases unpacking it with something like, you know, today's value or the value of the month. F fairly straightforward sort of, you know, not, not rocket science stuff, and yet very early on people could see a difference in behaviour management issues, um, issues of attrition, things that could actually be measured. And then, of course, eventually uh, some of the, the academic prowess also started to kick in. But we've done a lot with, with the idea that it couldn't possibly be this simple. <clears throat> but in actual fact, I, I think the lesson in it is that, that it is. <laughs> um, it is at, at one level um, a simple science. It, it is just people being their best selves in, in whatever they're doing. Um, you know, the world would be such a much better place if we all just thought about how we engage in our exchanges, all of our exchanges, the little smile, the little, um, you know, the little bit of helpfulness just as we're passing people in the street. All of those things build a much better kind of an environment, and that's all about values. So, so much of what we do as human beings is outside of our conscious awareness. And what I have observed is that when a community begins to focus on values, their awareness increases. If you take the Australian research, the first outcome of the research was that by thinking about values, you have greater awareness about your behavior, your thoughts. And so much that is happening in the world on the negative side, I believe often happens not intentionally, but because it's outside of of, of awareness. So by inducting ourselves into a, a greater clarity about these words called values, it helps raise our awareness. It's an obvious, an obvious concept that you do realise you, you do in everyday life overlook. And it's, it's, it's quite worrying when you sit here. For me, I'm sitting here and I'm like, wow, gosh, I, it's eye-opening. It really is. I'm going to finish up now. And I would just like a one or two line sentence of, of um, why people might want to engage. I know that that last about five to ten minutes is, is what that's what we've been explaining, but just in a real punchy way just, that will stick with us as to why we should engage with values. Um, Andrew, I'll start with you. I don't think you cannot engage with values. You're going to do it one way or the other. Uh, but the effect of engaging with them is twofold. The first one is you'll have better relationships in your world. And the second one is you'll be more aware of what you want in the world and more likely to get it. So good reasons to engage in values. Perfect. Thank you. I think is behind education generally, corporate world, everything is the flourishing of humanity. How do we ensure that human beings on this planet can flourish um, I look at my own grandchildren now, not just children, but grandchildren, and I say, think, how can they flourish? There is no other way that we can bring about the flourishing of humanity unless we focus on values. Brilliant. It's a supremely selfish exercise. If you learn to respect, to trust, to show mercy, to forgive, you will be way happier than doing anything else. Values um, is the way that humans interact with each other and there's loads of evidence to show that the way we perceive other people is the way we uh, live our own lives and if we can't treat other people well, we're not going to be treating ourselves well 
if we can treat ourselves with compassion, we'll treat other people with compassion. There's no other way in a human sense that we can operate. So engaging with values raises awareness of these key components of how we, un how we uh, understand our own motivations, how we understand other people's motivations, how we relate to each other. And from a personal, from a corporate, and from a social perspective, engagement with values, as everyone else has said, is the key to a, a flourishing and successful future. Thank you all again for joining us today. You've given us some fantastic insight to the power of values and you've outlined many varied ways in which we as individuals, not only as organisations and institutions and, and governments, but mainly as individuals, if, if one starts, it's almost like a butterfly effect um, and how we can benefit and engage from this consciously in our, our personal and corporate self. So for all those that are interested, the series of articles on the relationship quotient that um, Andrew was talking about um, is and can be found on the World Values Day website. Just simply type into Google World Values Day and you can, you can find us there right at the top of Google. Um, Andrew and Neil's work on resilience um, in schools is explained in more detail on the value-based education website. And again, just type value-based education into Google and you can find us there. So it leaves me to thank you, the audience, for watching this conversation. I hope it inspires you. Uh, it certainly inspired me. It's made me think a lot. It's opened my mind up a lot. And I do think that it is our place as a generation and following generations to actually engage in this. And it's the only way for us to create a better future for our communities, our relationships and and ourself, like Neil was saying, the, 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 the inner self has to be our best friend. So, yeah, I hope that we've, we've given you a small insight into the world that values can, can do for your life. So this is Kira Dempsey-Brench reporting from Brighton. Thank you so much. <laughs>